Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to the next installment in the Black Basing 201 video series. Now, I feel like I've tried to run through this intro a couple times and I keep fucking it up, so I'm just going to go fast and try to get to the point. And that point is, so far, a lot of what we've focused on doing has been of the micro variation variety. So, you know, when you think about the SEA camo that we did, or the green and gray camo, or any of the other stuff, a lot of it has focused on tiny shifts in either tonal variation or contrast variation to build that sort of depth of a paint that has seen better days. You know, even playing with the glossy blue, it was, you know, we're going to be walking through how to essentially apply a high-vis scheme over black primer. And it's not that hard. Um, you know, we're not dealing with marbling, we're dealing with more building up a single, you know, a single essentially blend coat of paint over black and just getting that to the point where it looks good. And this is honestly the one where I think black primer is maybe the least necessary, um, just because again, you are going for that single layer and this paint, you know, whether we're talking a high-vis Navy jet or something like an F-106 or an ADC gray uh, USAF F4 interceptor type thing. You know, these gloss grays that, that were used a lot in the 60s and 70s, they just, they don't show wear to the degree that other paint schemes do. And that's true of a few other schemes out there, um, you know, over time. The, uh, the other one that really pops to mind is that dark blue on blue thing that Japan has going on with their F2s. I have yet to see one of those that's not pretty and shiny and holding up well. It's kind of like the opposite of the uh, Hellenic Air Force, to be honest. Um, but that brings up another one, the, uh, the sort of light gray and blue-green thing that Greece has going on with their Mirage 2000s. Um, you compare that to any other aircraft in their fleet, and those things look spick and span. So, you know, these clean schemes are out there, and essentially, if you don't need that micro-variation in what you're trying to do, you don't really need the marble coat. Uh, that's what the marble coat does. And so this time out, we'll be playing with putting down paint without that marble coat and just building up a nice layer of color on top of black primer. Okay, so it's time to start laying down the insignia white. And we're just gonna be focusing this on the flap and the aileron. Okay, so the insignia white is down on the control surfaces. Um, as you saw while we were spraying, it's all about building up to that level of opacity. And so, you know, if we want to look at this good old thing again, with a lot of the variation work that we're doing, you know, with the SEA camo and whatnot, it's about getting into a range of essentially opacity or brightness. So, you know, if the paint is here, or sorry, if the paint is here, you want to kind of sneak up on it and have this sort of range where it's, you know, all of, you know, all of field green and then, you know, 75% field green. And in that range is where you get that variation out of. When you're dealing with just a clean coat, like what we're doing with the Insignia White, it's more about zeroing in on like a spot. So if Insignia White is here, we basically want to get the paint to here. And if there's a little variation, like tiny variation here and there, you know, one or two percentage points off, that's fine. But we're not doing the marbling where we're setting up like a 10 to 20% difference in opacity from the get-go. And so that enables us to get this nice, broadly uniform with a slight hint of 
something more going on coat down. Now, this has to dry for a little bit. I'm not about to mask something that I sprayed five minutes ago. So I'm gonna let this set up overnight and then we're gonna mask off the control surfaces and put down the light gold gray. Okay, so we've come back and covered up the overspray white with some black. Now it's time to lay down the gold gray. And I decided to use uh, C325. This is the semi-gloss version of gold gray. Same color as 315, just different sheen levels. And for this, I'm deciding I'm going to go ahead and break out my Guns PS290 trigger action brush just because it puts down a nice even spray pattern. This will let us hopefully cover more evenly. Since that's kind of what we're going for here. So. So the whole goal with a clean scheme like this is essentially building up to the opacity level of the paint itself. <clears throat> so there's not as much worry about shading and things like that. Okay, so here we are with a clean scheme over black and you can see it's still setting up in just a few places with the gray because this went on a bit wetter than I typically do with small painting. But, you know, you've got the white control surfaces, you've got the gray wing area, and everything is happy. And there's a hint as you kind of move this around of a little bit of depth under there. Nothing super substantial though because honestly, when you're going for just overall solid coverage like this, it doesn't matter as much what you have underneath it. But if you were going for solid coverage here and then some battered areas in other places, you know, you can use that to your advantage and you can alternate between clean coverage and sort of a marble blend type buildup as you would do with standard black basing. Plus, you know, if you have a lot of black primer, this, you know, something like this doesn't mean you have to go out and get gray primer or white primer or whatever, Th you know, this is it you get black primer and it still covers. So nothing really to this, it just kind of is what it is. But anyway, here is putting a clean scheme over black primer. So ultimately black primer is just that, black primer. Uh, it's really what you do with it beyond that that makes something like black basing a really powerful tool to have in your arsenal. But if you're going for a clean scheme, it, you know, it, you're going for 100% opacity basically. And with 100% opacity, it doesn't matter all that much what you put underneath your paint. You could use white primer or gray primer, or, you know, hell, you could bust out some uh, Tamiya AS12 bare metal silver and use that as your primer. It really doesn't matter because again, 100% opacity but it's entirely doable. You know, you can use black primer to get a nice clean scheme like this high vis that we've got on the underside of the Hellcat wing here. I mean, it's not particularly exciting. You know, clean schemes don't have the same dynamics going on that a heavily weathered paint job does. And a lot of stuff that you might want to put onto this would come, if, you know, in the weathering stages. So oil filters, panel line washes, streaks, things like that, that's where you can really bring the depth to this, which is the way that most of these things look in real life. Um, I would also add, you know, things like corrosion control touch-ups that did happen on high-vis schemes and are visible depending on the aircraft you're looking at and the photos and whatnot. But that base coat, unless you're talking about, you know, the rare examples that are heavily, heavily weathered, generally look like this. 
Now, one advantage to using a black primer, even when you're doing a clean scheme like this, is if you're dealing with an aircraft that has a little bit of everything going on. So some areas may look like this, but other areas may have some degradation happening, may, you know, may set up what else you can do with black basing and that sort of contrast and opacity variation to get some more depth into certain areas of the paint job. And it basically means you don't have to change primers. So, you know, you don't need black primer to do this, but you also don't need white primer or gray primer or red primer, you know, whatever the hell it is. You basically just need 100% opacity with what you're laying down. So, yeah, there's not really much of a, much in the way of learnings here. It's just understand what you're painting, understand the finish you're going for, and if it's a clean finish, bomb away, I guess. So with that, let's get on to some more fun things. Out. <laughs>